So, first of all, yeah, so this is my second LPJ, and I'll go over the pros and cons of these guitars, and then I'll tell you why I ended up selling one and why I ended up with another one. So, it is a Les Paul. If you read the website, right, this is about as affordable as you can get to get a real West, a real Les Paul. It's got the traditional weight relief. It's a mahogany body, maple top. It does have a maple neck, which makes it a little brighter than some, but um, it's just stripped down, so you don't get the nice finish on it. Some people might prefer the look of these. They look cool. Um, stripped down look, no binding, that kind of thing. Let me take that off. Okay. And the headstock is different. It has the crown instead of saying Les Paul right along here. The only thing not original on this particular LPJ is, this should say LPJ, but the guy I bought it from uh, just changed it. I've only had this particular model a couple of weeks, so uh, I'm still getting used to this one. But what's good about the LPJs? Well, the sound. Everybody's buying a Les Paul for the sound, right? So it does have an L, uh, a good sound. Um, these are the 61 Zebra uh, humbuckers, and it's a little bright for sure. I found the, the bridge pickup to be a little bit harsh. Um, you could say maybe it's because of the maple, maybe it's the pickup, um, but definitely a little bright. So if I was going to keep the, when I was planning on keeping the other one, I was thinking about changing that out. Um, the pick, uh, this, they call these speed knobs. Actually, I really like these. Initially, I wasn't a big fan of numbers on them. If you can see the the grip and the divots in them, they're actually very easy to grip. Uh, so if you're hot and sweaty playing live, you'll be able to find exactly where you need to be in a hurry. Uh, I wasn't, it's my first Les Paul, so I wasn't used to the fact that you actually need a couple tone knobs and it takes a little bit to dial in that, that sweet spot. Um, on my other guitars, I typically probably left the tone on full, never had to mess with it, never bothered me before, but on the Gibson, uh, definitely took a little bit of time to play with. Her neck pickup sounds great clean, um, great clean sounds, and the thing about Les Pauls is that they're great rock guitars, it doesn't matter if you're doing blues, it doesn't matter if you're doing metal, it doesn't matter if you're doing country, you can, you can do it all on a Les Paul for sure, so the sound, good, and obviously you can change, you know, change the pickups to whatever you want. Um, what I didn't like about my Les Paul, a uh, few things. So, first of all, the pickup I wasn't loving, so I was thinking about changing. Now, I had already spent $7.99 on a guitar, right? So, think about the cost of a, a new pickup, and I was considering the Slash set. So, you're talking $200. Bucks. If I was going to pay someone to do it, do it myself. You could be talking closer to $300. Um, so, I went from $7.99 plus taxes was near $900. And then now I'm talking about $300 for pickups. So, you know, now I'm talking about a $1,200 guitar. In addition to that, the frets were never great. I was okay with it, but it, I mean, it was a little bit rough and definitely not the same quality you would see off of an, like an ESP LTD in the same $700 range or a Dean that I've had in the five $600 range. Uh, what else have I owned? I've owned a Gretsch Electromatic. I've owned a lot of guitars in the, that mid-level range. Um, and they're usually top quality. Right now I have a G&L Jerry Cantrell. Again, the quality on the frets and the neck, it's nicer. It's better, hands down, for sure. Okay. Another thing I didn't like on the LPJ, the first, especially the first one I had, this one's uh, a little better in some of the areas I'm gonna talk about, but um, it was the vintage sunburst finish. So the back of the neck was, un uh, was completely unfinished. Uh, and so you can just see where, where it met the fretboard, it just didn't feel right. It was, it was just noticeable. So even after I had the guitar a year, I'd still think about it when I was playing the guitar. It just, it wasn't a clean finish. I've had other guitars with the same thing. I got my G&L Jerry Cantrell right here. So, there's this baby. So, the LPJ looked like that, um, but on the G&L, it's... I don't notice it. It's just a really smooth finish, and I don't mind the fact that it's not bound. It never bugs me. That was one thing I never got over on the the other one. Um, on this second LPJ, it's it, I don't really notice it so much either. So quality control is definitely seems to be an issue with Gibson, and people talk about the different inconsistencies. So I've seen uh, definitely seen that. Like the frets on this guitar are better. Um, the nut on this guitar is better. Is the uh, I knew since it didn't have a glossy finish on it, it wasn't going to hold up as well. It's got the satin finish. Uh, but it 
I only had the guitar a couple months and it started flaking off around here just a little bit. Um, on this side it was doing it too. I honestly don't even know what it was caused by, what it was getting hit. Uh, but it was, I mean, it was pretty minor, but, you know, within three months I knew that eventually, within a couple of years, this whole edge is going to be losing the paint on it. Um, some people like the wear and tear. I mean, I get it. It looks cool. I mean, I like Fender Strats that look like they've been worn in, and uh, I just didn't know if I wanted my uh, brand new Gibson Les Paul to be doing that already. So This is typical Gibson uh, tuning keys on this. So... And from what I understand from Gibson reviews is that they all tend to go out of tune a little bit. So it's, uh, I've heard different reasons. Some people say blame the tuning keys. I've seen videos where they actually talk about the angle of the headstock. Um, and I just read reviews this morning. I was checking out this guitar online. Um, people changed the tuning keys. It wasn't enough. So they had to go ahead and change the nut. And that seems to have solved their problems. Uh, so basically what it all added up to is... It's a cool guitar, I liked it, I never had an issue with the sound, it was good, but when I started talking about the changes I wanted to make this guitar, it went from a seven, eight hundred dollar guitar, and all of a sudden to a twelve hundred dollar guitar, and I'm talking about changing tuners and the nut, and it just, it just bothered me, I felt like I had too much invested in it already, and it wasn't sitting right with me, so I said, screw it, I'm going to sell it, I'm going to buy something else that I'm happier with, I don't want this much money in one guitar, and that's what I did. Um, I happened to see one of these on Kijiji, this guy. I saw this guy on Kijiji with a hard shell case for less than $500, Canadian. And I just thought, dang, that's a heck of a deal. I will, uh, that's a great second guitar to have. It's a great guitar to jam with. Like I said, the sound was always good. Um, and a good, it's a workhorse. I can use it for any kind of music. So that's what I did. I picked it up for 500 bucks, and now I'm just looking at it totally different, right? So instead of saying, well, it was $900 with taxes, and I'm going to have to add all this to it, now it's a $500 guitar with a hard shell case, so it pretty much puts it at $400. Uh, a good sound. It's a Gibson. I'm always going to be able to sell it. So do I recommend buying a Gibson LPJ? I don't recommend buying one new. Hopefully you've figured that out by now, but... Yeah, I mean, if you see one used for 500 bucks, it's a good deal. I think Gibson and Les Paul lovers are going to like the guitar. If you're new to Gibson and you've been playing Ibanez, ESP, all sorts of other brands, Schecter, I think the feel, just, just going on feel alone, right, from what goes what's in your hands, the frets, the neck, the body, um, again, all those other brands are going to carve out the body. It's going to fit you a little bit better. Um... I think people coming from those brands in the $700 range are going to be disappointed with the quality control. Not necessarily the sound, uh, but just just the feel of the instrument. That's how I felt, anyways. Uh, to me, it's, it's not up there with uh, all those Asian-made guitars, and this is made in the uh, USA. So what it comes down to, is this a good guitar? Yes. Are you going to be able to get lots of good sounds out of it? Use it for lots of uh, different kinds of music? Absolutely. Do I think it's a great steal for $700? No. I think you're going to get uh, a lot better of a deal buying other brands for, for, the, uh, for the average guitarist like myself. It's down in their bedroom most of the time, maybe the odd gig, whatever. I think you might be more pleased with the feel of, a, of another brand, but obviously that's uh, very subjective. But Anyways, this is Guitar Worm. Thanks for watching the video, and uh, I'm getting out of here. We'll see you next time.